welcome back to the plot it's the middle of the afternoon i did have a load of jobs to do this morning i've potted on the aubergines that weren't quite ready when i did the chilies the other day so they're done now and i had to re-sow three lots of different types of kale and they've germinated now so i've actually potted those on so i could bring them up to the greenhouse because it's getting a little bit full at home i had to bring some things up here they're only really tiny let me show you what i've done So look how tiny. Oh bless. I've got one good one. I'm tough from original batch and one good one of them as well. But we've got the um, blue scotch curled kale. And that's the Cavalo Nero normal one. Whoops. Oh <laughs> yeah, Cavalo Nero. And that one in the back there is the scarlet kale. So again I've got one good one really from the first lot that's just sort of starting to show its little red streak in the middle there some of these in these little paper pots they're really really tiny look at him i wanted six of each i mean i did seven of them because can't count as you know but yeah i've got tidgy little baby there i mean he might not pull through but it's okay it doesn't matter it's just insurance policy really isn't it you don't really need loads of kale plants generally i pricked out and potted on a load of coriander as well so that'll be really leggy coriander that germinated on top of the boiler and i missed it for 24 hours and it went really long and straggly <laughs> so it's still quite straggly but coriander has a habit of doing that doesn't it so it's up here now i've got four per pot in these five and then the last lot the the rest of the bunch are just split in two and i popped in those two there so either way they're up here now these are the brassicas that I potted on the other day and they're growing strongly already. They're doing really, really well. I think these have been up here maybe about a week, maybe now, maybe a week and a half. But yeah, lots of different ones there. And oh, I'm really pleased with those. They're lovely, aren't they? If I'm being honest, I've just sat and had a massive lunch as well. I went shopping on the way here for some bits and bobs and I got a pot of reduced hummus a load of Pringles crisps and I did get now JB would hate this one tea naturally JB because he doesn't like cauliflower but they were like a cauliflower cheese pasty thing <laughs> well I thought it were nice so I've, I've had that and I've had a coffee as well from my little stove I kind of feel like having a bit of a noddy a little bit of a nap but yeah got to get on with some jobs haven't I um where's my hat oh <gasps> I can hear Kelvin I think he knows it's raining or can you hear him let's find him Kelvin <gasps> I can hear him down here where is he come on Kelvin speak Speak to me, son. <clears throat> oh, God, look at that. Oh. Oh, he's in, I know where he is. He's in corner. You were croaking. One brassica that I'm not growing this year, but I know a lot of people are, it's a really popular one, is Kaylet's. But Will from the Flying Gardener YouTube channel, he's doing a little bit of a Kaylet grow along at the moment. So if you want to grow along, please go and follow his channel. I'll put his links to YouTube and Instagram in the description below. And give him a follow because his channel's really, really great. And his plot's incredibly neat and tidy. It's very satisfying to watch. Right, Straubs. Dee, 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 dee. Here we go. Bucket of strawberry runners. Loads of roots on them as well. Some of them are huge. So they're going to go all down here. I mean, these are little interlopers, aren't they? They were just biding the time. Uh, but yeah, all the way down here, I'm going to put the strawberries. I do need to finish mulching that end because that's got some rabbit manure and, you know, bedding on. So I'm going to put a bit of my rough compost just over the top so it's all consistent. And then, yeah, we're going to get them planted out.
Look at what we've got. So, these have just been sat in that tub probably for about an hour and a half because I've, you know, I went shopping didn't I, for all my food, <laughs> on way, all my snacks. Um, but in my experience, I mean, you've all on to kill a strawberry plant, really. Um, you can even take the runners and just submerge them in water and leave them for weeks. Um, I heard that that were a good way to um, get the roots to start growing so you could propagate them. It's not, in my opinion, it's not at all. You're better just taking the the little runners that come off, putting them in a little bit of their own compost in a pot at the side, wait till it's rooted, snip off the little runner and then you've got your fresh little plant. Um, I didn't find that they rooted very well at all but they certainly didn't die and they were submerged in water for ages, for weeks. So very, very tough and our normal sort of British uh, winters, well I mean this one that we've just had where it was like minus what, seven, eight, something like that, these have just been in the back garden. And they all died off, didn't they? They all went crispy like that, but the actual crowns were fine. So yeah, they're just growing back on now. And yeah, they're, they're kind of indestructible, almost. So a really good one for beginner gardeners to start off with. Because uh, yeah, you're going to get the fruits of your labour, aren't you? You know, pretty easily. <laughs> it's a bit of a crap analogy. Uh, but yeah, you're going to see the benefits of it. And you know, you've all, like I say, you've all to kill them, so yeah brilliant for a beginner who's not too confident that sort of thing want a bit of weeding out those loads of grass in this one James got me a brand new kneeler mat and it's a right fancy one and I keep forgetting and leaving it at home so I'm on compost bag again aren't I <laughs> anyway I've trimmed all these up so they're nice and neat now and I'm just going to whack them in at front edge if I put them in just at the front I'm hoping that the strawberries kind of flop over and they'll be easy to pick and then I can do a bit of something down back of it maybe some salad maybe some of my lob joints costs you know something like that so Oh, get him in there. I'm just planting them so the crowns are ever so slightly proud as well. I don't want them burying deeper and potentially rotting off. Not that I think they will in this because it's really sort of woody and fluffy. Um, and it's all compost underneath pretty much, isn't it? So I think we'll be fine, but yeah, just sort of leaving them ever so slightly proud. Oh, what about him there? I think, yeah, about 12 inch apart, I think, maybe. Some of them are bigger than others, but maybe about 12 inch apart will do. I think technically that's two. Yeah, I'll separate this. Yeah, there we go. Rough as you like, because, you know, the, the bomb proof. Use my hand, hurry, hurry. That'll do.
can go there for now. I'm sure it'll be fine. I think with these last few that I've got spare, I think I'll make another hanging basket up. And then we can maybe get some early ones going in here because I've got my little one there behind you. Yeah, and that's flowering now, lovely. So get these planted up and see if they catch up a bit. basket that were outside just emptied it out because that had some very used up compost from last year when it grew some little tiny tomatoes and they even had some sweet peas in it that I did last year and what I've gone and fetched is some manure I've got in here out of one of my bags that I collected the other day it needs a bit of breaking up and you know a few dodgy looking roots taken out of it but the other thing I've, I thought I'd put in is this is a bit of me Oh, sorry, getting it on mic. This is a bit of my composted, I say composted, but you know, my drowned mare's tail from last year. And it's just been taken out of one of those bags that's weighing down the plastic sheet at the front. So that will add a little bit of lightness. I mean, it's not really going to add much in the way of nutrient, I don't think, but I'm just a bit concerned about how much weight there is in the hanging baskets. And it's going to have loads of fuel with the manure, but this mix is just going to help cut it a little bit and lighten it up. So I'm going to mix them both together and bung them in, and that's what I'm using. So yeah, nice and simple, use what you've got. But yeah, try and have a little bit of common sense by lightening it up, and it does use this. And with that being in a container as well, and also I quite like putting this in the potato buckets too, if any of it does start to sprout and come back to life, it's contained, isn't it? And it can be dealt with then, but that row that I've put at the front you know and I mulched one of those rows under the sheet with some of this just experimentally I've got to hope that that doesn't take root because that were a bit brave that but I think it's okay I think it's been drowned long enough right so I'm going to sort through this manure just make sure that there's nothing weird in it because it looked like there might have been one or two sort of bindweed roots in it so let us sort I know what a bit of that whitey bit and then All that's nicely mixed together is that so we'll get this filled and get the strawberries in it easy peasy go so yeah all done four of them four little spare ones in little top dressing of me really rough woolly woody compost it's got loads of moss in it as well so i'm thinking this might be good for water retention as well and then plotty plotty's gonna croon gently to these strawberries and get them to grow on lovely and strong and nice and fast and get us loads of fruit so i'm looking for where to hang these where i'm not gonna bang my head on them so if I put them on any of these by the door, I'm oh, just going to walk into them. Because I mean, I walk into this one often enough and it's right at the end. So I'm just wondering if... I'm just wondering if I could put a hook under... Oh, got some resin on me here. And a spider web. So I'm wondering if I can put a hook underneath this shelf and just hang it off that. I don't want it to obviously hit this back window. But it'll be out of way, won't it, there? Anyway, I'm going to try it and just see if it works. 
and I can't find my tiny drill bit so I'm just going to drive a little screw in first and then unscrew it and that's going to pilot drill my little hole so you know again use what you've got <laughs> drippy drippy because it's out of water but as long as that don't fall down I mean that's all right it's out of way isn't it largely as long as I don't like bash my chair into it and put that window through Ooh. Uh, right now grow on little buddies grow on and you keep an eye on them chum right I've got a nice little job to do next um, a bit more sewing a really important one it's the little baby marigolds a little well, however you want to call it, tad tajites, 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 uh, Steve Greenside up calls them, doesn't he? So yeah, these are saved seed. Now, if you've been following a while, you might have seen the video where I harvested these when the ones that were in the greenhouse had gone over back into the year and saved loads and loads of seed. Fabulous. So, sowing a few of them today. I'm going to put them in this little cheap flimsy propagator uh, they like it a little bit warm um, yeah they don't want to get too cold so I'm going to put them in that use its little lid just to help insulate them a little bit but when the tomatoes get planted in here and like what I did last year I did put a little plant in the top of some of the um, the bags that I was growing the tomatoes in as well because they are a great companion plant to the tomatoes um, there's, they're meant to give off something from the roots that wards off pests that could be detrimental to the tomatoes as well and of course they're going to attract the pollinators in as well aren't they which is lovely so there's i can't think of anything really bad about growing them apart from they've got they've got a slightly funky smell um i'm not massively keen on them but you can only really smell it you know if you sort of um fluff the hair kind of thing you know if you agitate them <laughs> then you can smell it then so yeah if you don't do that then you're all right uh yeah so i'm gonna make some more little paper pots reuse recycle stuff so i used up my last seed catalogue but i've got another one here aren't I? another volunteer uh yeah so i'm gonna make my little paper pots out of this in my little spice jar and i think i'll just do as many as i can fit in this i don't know how many there'll be but i mean they can always be fed into some of the beds can't they because like i say super beneficial little plant and they're not the really big tall things either they're only about i don't know 12 18 inch something like that i mean mine were only about 12 inch because they're all in quite small pots um but yeah not the big sprawling things so they're quite easy to place here and there and they don't just take over so let's make some little pots so now then paper pots i don't have one of them fancy wooden thingies that are expensive um just a little spice jar so all i do is sheet of paper i just eyeball it really just roughly fold it down in fact more often than not i use two sheets just to make sure it's a little bit sturdier because after a few weeks when it's been damp it does start dropping in bits it does hold together quite well and that's not so bad because when you put them out they are going to just disintegrate and the roots are going to get out absolutely fine and you know biodegradable but yeah sheet of paper folded over pop it on your spice jar roll it around if it'll do it it's a bit crinkly where you've got your little joint there is the best place to start folding the, the bottom of it down so you just fold it in once twice careful with it last done because it can sometimes rip a bit because it's getting a bit thick now but three times three times a lady three times a plant pot squidgy squidgy like that make it form and then you've got your little plant pot and sometimes this does kick out but it doesn't matter because once that gets wet and with the weight of the compost in it it'll form and it'll sort of like stick itself together and then you'll have a nice little plant pot so yeah do a few of them and we'll just sew straight into them so yeah, not doing them in a seed tray, I'm not going to be pricking them out or anything like that. I'll just sew them straight into there and I might put maybe three, three per station perhaps. And then I can weed out a couple, can't I, if I get good germination. Well that's pretty, isn't it? Petticoat, pink aquilegia. Mmm, 
whenever this way it was three pound three pound sixty for fifty seeds i bet it's 18 quid now let's look at that this aquilegia this petticoat one or whatever it was can you see lovely isn't it like limey green white and pinky color lovely mm. this morning i checked my email and it said on it your order to premier seeds is in and i thought oh what have I ordered? What have I done in my sleep again? And then I thought, oh no, I did. I ordered something, didn't I? Because you know, I haven't done a lot of ordering of things this year. But yeah, I have actually put an order through. But for a minute there, I thought, oh, what have you been doing? But and actually, it reminded me because there's a couple of types of aquilegia that I have ordered from Premier Seeds. Um, can I remember what colour they were? No, because I was sort of panic buying while I was sat in bed one time. Um, I think like a purpley coloured one, a bit of a purple and whitey colour maybe a blue yeah i think a blue one as well because this this is um my front garden i want it sort of unicorn colors all based around the syrinth color palette so you know like turquoises greeny colors purples a little bit of pink and some white as well you know for a bit of contrast so yeah this is for the front garden anyway we'll see if see if that comes off because garden at home always gets neglected for plot so that's the vibe that i want in the front garden and if it attracts a couple of unicorns then all the better look at this one for a cosmos alternative i don't know how you say it Unless it isn't osteospermum, it might be. Because I just saw this bit here where it says, oh, whatever. Oh, Eclonis. Osteospermum Eclonis. Oh, gosh, what a name. Sky and Ice. Let me show you that picture there. Isn't that nice, like a bluey sort of centre bit? And then there's lovely little white petals. It looks a bit um, Cosmos like, doesn't it? 75 centimetres tall, so, you know, like small Cosmos size. Unique midnight blue centres and a steely blue reverse. Mm. They look nice. Might have to try and remember them. So as I'm going through this book and making my little pots, I'm sort of seeing all these and I'm like, oh, oh, you know, learning some new names and stuff. <laughs> I were brave and I fetched me my big bag of compost out at shed. You know, I mentioned last time I went for that and there were a big spider on it. Anyway, I've got it now. Managed to get it away. Let's put you back where you can see something. Show you one of them. So, in a little, oh, sunflower, sunflower pot. So I've just put the uh, nice fine stuff with the sanding in the top of there and I'm just going to put three seeds in the top of it and then just top it over with some fine stuff again. Because uh, it's saved stuff, I can't really remember what it says on the seed packet about how deep you put them and that kind of thing. But I don't think it's rocket science with these, I think they're quite happy to just grow. So I'm just gonna I'm just going to plant them, aren't I? And I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, and these are a mix, mix of colours, so just put them all in one bag together. I'll show you what they look like up close. So, if we can sort of do this business and see them, they're almost like little javelins. They're really quite little twiggy thing. Oops, dropped one. They're almost like just a little bit of the uh, petal sort of on the end of it, like a little stick. And I'm just going to lay them on the side. There we go, three of them in there. You know, ish, three ish, because they're a bit, bit difficult to sort of separate. They're quite splintery and sort of stick together and go up your fingernails. There we go 
little bit like that. Just put a little bit more compost on top and water them in. There we go. So they've been watered in a little bit from the top. And then there's just a little bit of a reservoir of it in the bottom there that'll slowly get wicked up into the rest of this compost. And I'm going to put its little lid on there just to keep the moisture in and just keep them a little bit warmer if it just drops a bit cooler. And they should be okay. So we'll get it a label and then this is done. Right, so I'll put a little note in my book as well that I've sown those because I'm doing my best to try and keep a log of everything that I'm doing. I will lose control of it in the end when everything gets really busy. But I've, I've written in that I've potted on the aubergine this morning and I have put a little note about the Buster Gold Peppers as well because they were growing pretty slowly really. Um, I've written in that I've potted on the kale and written the three types and that I've taken them up here. Um, two times aubergine meatloaf I've potted on as well. So, 22 stations of the little tadgetees, however you want to say it, uh, little marigolds, and three seeds-ish per station. So, seeded 22 times, I put paper pots. Three seeds-ish pot at greenhouse all right fab that's it and it's quite nice you know to look back you can sort of go oh 8th of feb sowed three aubergine galene you know whatever is that it's quite good is that because next year when i think oh what date shall i do whatever i can look in my book and go well i did it then and it were i remember it being really good or not so good or this happened that happened and i can just sort of try and adapt a little bit and uh, it's just fun to look back to be fair as well and you know remember stuff that happened and whatever yeah so little book done needs a label i'm not going to use a coloured stick code for these i'm just going to write one label only because they're all the same in this one thing so if it just wants one Pencils and labels sort of work with each other. I find it really difficult and annoying. Tajitis. You have to write really big like a kid. It's just difficult. Somebody were able to write on that because it said Chinese cabbage. I think I found this label on the plot, kind of buried. Because uh, I, haven't, I haven't written that on there. Yeah, so someone were able to write on it, just not me. Okie doke, lid. And then I've got to bring everything else back in. I put a load of stuff out on beds again, just, you know, hardening off, getting a bit of wind, a bit of waft. Um, I'm running out of space. But anyway, because these aren't through yet, these are just germinating. They can go on the bottom shelf. They don't need to be in the sun or anything like that. So... They don't get first choice. Right, I'll see if I can get tidied up and get everything to fit back in here. <laughs> well, I've managed to get everything in that I want to put away. I've just checked the weather. And we're going to have three or four days where it's quite mild, really. I mean, we've got sort of between 11 and 14 degrees. So I've left the broad beans and the two types of onion outside. Um, they've had a few trips outside, you know, through the day and been kind of hardening off a little bit, getting a little bit of fresh air and wind and strengthening the little stems and that kind of thing. So I'm going to leave them out, just put them on the step of the greenhouse um, and we'll come back to them, check them in a couple of days and make sure they're all right. But all being well, if it looks like it's going to be reasonable for the next sort of week or so, maybe from the weekend, I'm thinking about actually planting out the broad beans. So we'll just be into the start of April by that point. I need to check my little book from last year, don't I, to see when I did them. I'll put it up on screen once I've checked, you know, that's if I wrote it down. Um, yeah, so we should have his first thing. Well, I say it first thing going out in the bed. I just, I've just put a, a lettuce out that were in here because it had a little bit of green fly on it. So 
he's taking his chances outside just behind the strawberries just with it being you know looking like it's going to be quite mild anyway so i don't really mind if i lose that one but that's a bit of a tester isn't it yeah and everything else is back in here that's a little tiny seedling and needs to stop in for a bit longer but we're off aren't we yeah crumbs and I'm pleased with the little jobs that I got done. I've been meaning to get those strawberries up here for a while, really. I was going to try and get them done back into last year, but it took a while to get that bed made and filled and whatnot. So I had to sort of wait until until growth started again. Um, yeah, and my little basket that I've got here. And this one that's up here is already flowering. So hopefully we'll get some pollination on that and get a, you know get an early batch of strawberries in. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and thank you if you already have and you've been watching along so we're over 500 now and that's that's fabulous is that thank you so much and please hit the like button it really helps the channel and i'll see you next time well yeah so um i don't know that fly's buzzing around go away peppers were growing quite slow as well got an interrupting dog haven't we i pricked on and uh, well what do you call it <laughs> this fly's huge you know what shut up i must admit um after i lugged that bag out at shed i was i was really tired so i made another coffee and i've actually been sat for about 10 minutes having a little rest <sighs> Dear me. <laughs> right. Oh, I need some scissors.